Da, 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 da. You know the rules, and so do I. Nick. Any other? Yeah, yeah. What? 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 Yes, 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 yes. Who? Oh, hi. Um. Oh, yeah. Hi. Um. Oh. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. Hi. 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 Did I just catch you watching the Cashly videos again? No, no. I was actually just watching some punk there because I'm a big, uh, big punk fan. Yeah, that's right. Um. Okay. Um, uh, awkward. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't um, look like that. Yeah, so welcome to HashiCraft. And uh, we're, we're pretty excited because this is the inaugural episode. It's the first ever HashiCraft. And, well, it's kind of the first ever. It's kind of version 1.5. But um, yeah. what we're excited about and what we're going to teach you today is we're going to show you how you can actually terraform yourself a Minecraft server. And we're going to use Azure container storage to be able to do that and uh, Azure container solutions and it's going to be pretty amazing so Eric without further ado let's yep. head over to the studio and get started how are you doing today good buddy are okay. you well uh yeah like uh after some uh, technical difficulties everything <laughs> oh yeah running a lot smoother now than uh where the, did you uh the internet did you has go to? Not, did you? not been oh, good you today no, it it sometimes isn't. Shall I uh, hit the screen, Nick? Before uh, you yeah, let's break uh, any more screens. Let's get on uh, get on our Zoom call. Okay, so welcome to HashiCraft. And uh, as we were saying, what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of look at Terraform. So we're going to look at how we can use Terraform to create containers inside of Azure Container Storage. And specifically, the containers that we're going to create is going to be a Minecraft server, which is kind of pertinent considering we are in Minecraft world right now. So does that mean we're going to create a similar server to this with like yeah. everything we have on here? Yeah, kind of. I mean, okay, I think cool. kind of we will show a few different things for folks, but um, we're going to kind of start off with the basics of Terraform. We're going to take people through all of that and kind of how they can can do all of these sort of setup things. But eventually, we're going to kind of build on that and we'll show them some other features, some other tooling, maybe some vaults, some nomads, some console. Um, yeah, and it should be cool. So should so we get started? Where do we get started? Why don't yeah, we get please. started? All show right, me. let's go to the code window. All righty, here we go. Okay, so Terraform is written in a language called HCL. So that's the HashiCorp configuration language. It's it's kind of a, a nice, simple sort of language, very easy to read. Let's take a quick look okay. at an HCL block, Eric. So HCL so block. So I don't need to uh, write any YAML then? You don't need to write any YAML. You can write some YAML if you want, um, but uh, I wouldn't heavily recommend it. But anyway, here we go. So this is a this is a block. So we have provider, Azure RM, and then we have version features. So what's going on here? So we have to think about the way that Terraform works. So the way that Terraform works is you break up things into providers. So a provider is such as Azure. A provider is also okay. something like GCP. A provider is AWS. Things like Cloudflare. There's a number of different providers, but kind of that concept of breaking things into that provider is, is the way that this works. Okay. So, so pretty much in every Terraform block, you need to declare your provider because the provider is also the thing which is going to manage your authentication. So All right. So is, is a provider then basically like a sort of library I include that the rest of my code will need? Something like, like that? Yeah, I think so. I think it's kind of more of a, a sort of a gateway or a bridge to the underlying cloud providers APIs. So okay. we're, we're going to de declare this uh, this provider here called um, Azure RM. So we have this provider, which is the, the Azure RM provider. And in order for this to work, we need some credentials. So if we kind of look at the guide here and we kind of look over at the website, we'll put all of these links in the, the video below, but yeah. you kind of need to authenticate against the, the, the API. You need your, your sort of 
your Azure credentials in order for Terraform to work. And this guide here okay. is going to going to sort of take you through the steps of using the AZ command line to be able to do that. In the end, the kind of the, okay. the result is you're going to set some environment variables, and the environment variables are going to kind of look something like this. So, so you know, the uh, the CLI commands will will these values that I need to use for my. That's right. Yeah. So the guide is going to extract all of that information. Uh, sorry teach you how okay. to extract that information. We'll not run over it now because I will literally get fired if I leak my Azure credentials to the internet. Not good. Oh, well, not again. <laughs> yes. Right. So back into our code. So we have a provider, but what about resources? So everything in Terraform is composed of resources. So if you think of things like, if you are familiar with Azure, Azure has the concept of a resource group. And yeah. a resource group, something like okay. this. So a resource yeah. group is a very top level thing in Azure. It, it's kind of the thing that all of the other resources, such as your various container groups, your storage, your Kubernetes clusters, your virtual machines, everything kind of hangs beneath that. So we, we need to create one of those. And we're going to create one of those using this declaration here. So if you look at this, right, this time we've got this keyword and it says resource. So what we're doing yeah. with resource is we're declaring that this block or this stanza is defining a resource. Now, the next All right. parameter yeah, is the resource type. So we're always going to prefix with the provider name. That's just convention. But then we're going to create this resource group. Okay. You getting this? Is All right. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just confused by the two times Minecraft. Like I would assume that the one would be the name. Is that not the case? Well, so it is kind of. So what happens here is you see, you've got a name of the resource block and that's this third kind of parameter of this top line here. The name here is actually the name of the resource that will be created inside of Azure. And, and these two can be different. So we can do... Okay. Ashy craft uh, test. So when I reference it from my other configuration, which we'll look at in a moment, I'm going to use Minecraft, but internally, it's going to be created as Hashicraft test. Okay. So that's the Minecraft is more for Terraform to keep track of sort of. Yeah, exactly. That's right. It's an internal reference. So okay. should we create this? Yeah, show me how to do that. All right. So what oh, you went up here. I went up there. What we're going to do first is we need to initialize. So whenever we add a new provider or we create a new configuration, we need to run the command Terraform init. And what Terraform init is going to do is it's going to download any of the provider plugins. So the provider plugins are separate from the Terraform command line tool. And that's good because it means they okay. can be versioned independently. So Nick, we just did the the init. Um, what's the next step to to create this server? Yeah. So what we're going to do next is we're going to run a Terraform plan. And what Terraform plan is going to do is it's going to look at the difference between what we have and what will be. So that's kind of the difference between the infrastructure that exists and what we've defined in our main.tf. And you can see here okay. that on this kind of output that what we have is this output and it's telling us it's going to create a resource group which is correct right because that's what we had defined in the configuration before you remember that yep so okay so if we want to kind of make the, the the change to that resource then what we can do is we run the next step and the next step is terraform apply do you uh you feel you're feeling brave should we should we should we maybe maybe give this a go yep all right. Let's create this. Here goes. Terraform. Terraform apply. And here we go. So this is now going to quickly just run a little check for us. It's going to ask us for some confirmation, and we're hitting yes. So now what okay, happens? Okay, so that is, was the same output as the the plan, right? Yeah. So now what happened there though is the Terraform has now actually contacted. Azure using their APIs 
And it's kind of created that resource for us. So if I kind of bounce over to my Azure portal and look at my, my resource groups, then you can see, there it is, look. There's that resource that, uh, that I just created, which, I mean, that's pretty cool. But it doesn't give us... So the, the resource group is, is basically like the, the, the big envelope where we create all our things in, right? Right. It's kind of top line. It's, it's an Azure-specific construct rather than a sort of a Terraform one. But, you know, you can see here if I look at um, our other resource group where we're running this server, you can kind of see yeah. there that we've got sort of um, a storage account and we've got some container instances. So it, it's that top-level container. Okay. So what we need to do now is we need to be able to actually add the container itself, which is going to sort of have our Minecraft server in it. So let's look at how we're going to do that. So, so Nick, when you say container, is that just a Docker container that we're going to spin up on Azure? Yeah, that's right. We're literally just going to use a, a Docker container. And the, the, the benefit of being able to do that is, well, it's it's really, really simple. We don't need to worry about hosting any any application servers or, or anything like that. We we just kind of you know, set this up and, and let it run. So, I mean, let, okay. let's kind of walk through those steps. So yep. again, we're using this resource declaration. But this time, we're okay. creating an Azure container group. Now, all, right. all of these resources are defined in the Terraform documentation, and we'll we'll put links for this down below there. But you know, you can kind of see that, and and if I sort of scroll down through there, you can you can see all of the various different things that we need, and all of the various different arguments and and the parameters. Let's quickly kind of jump into our code and let's get some of this set up. So on a sort right. of a top level, what we're going to do is we're going to set the name. And what is this? Yep. This is going to be the name of the container group. And yeah, let's just call it Minecraft. Now the location. The location is going to be like Western Europe or Central Europe or Eastern Europe or what, you know, any of the Azure regions. Now we could type that in there. But if you see what we're actually doing is we're, we're kind of linking it, right? We've got this link here, and this is called interpolation. So it's a, it's a method of Terraform which allows you to reference other sort of resources and other stanza blocks. Okay, so it's reading that field name and location from the resource group .minecraft object? That's right. So, I mean, if you, if you okay. kind of read it across, we've got the Azure resource group, so it's going to reference an Azure resource group with the name of Minecraft and then it's going to set the the, the sort of the, the resource group name to be the output parameter, the parameter name, and which in this instance right, is HashiCraft be... test. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So we can kind of build this interpolation up and you see the same thing there for location. So let's kind of yep. go through and let's add some more, some stuff into here. So we need to define a All container right. and a container is a, a sort of a, part of a, a resource group. So I can add a block again. So this is a kind of a child block because HCL is relational. So it's kind of nice. It kind of keeps things nice and clean. So I'm defining this container block. I'm just going to call it studio. Yeah. And this is defining a Docker container. So what I need to do is I need to define an image. So image equals. The image that we're going to use is our Minecraft image, which we've pushed up to Docker Hub here. And this is just the HashiCraft Minecraft. We can, okay. uh, we can and use this. People can, can pull that one, right? It's public? That's right. Yeah, it's all public. And all we've done is literally okay, cool. just put the Minecraft server into a Docker container for people. Make it nice and easy. So all I right. reference the image there. And... I'm going to reference the image and I'm going to give it a tag. So it's version 1.12.2. Now, I also need to determine, like, give it some, allocate some resources. Okay. So, well, what resources do I want? Well, I want to be able to kind of give it a CPU. And I'm going to say, well, I only want half a core of a CPU because I don't really need anything like huge there, right? And then I can specify the memory. So I'm going to say memory. 
I'm just going to give it, uh, I don't know, a gigabyte. That should be more than good enough, even for Java. And so if, if we're actually running a server, right, would, would this be enough to, to host it or would we need to increase those slightly? I mean, it should be fine if you're just running a little sort of server for your family. It, it could have, um, Minecraft sort of needs additional resources depending on sort of the number of connections and things like that. But we'll, we'll kind of, as okay. we go through the series, we'll look at how you can actually change these values without losing your entire Minecraft world, which is, that's going to be a big thing, right? Yeah. It's not what you want. Okay. So what we need no. to do <laughs> is we need to specify a port. So if you've used Docker before or you've used Docker Compose or anything like that, this should be really familiar. It's kind of exactly the same sort of constructs. We're defining a port. So that would be the same as the dash P on a Docker run? That's right. Yeah. So the, okay. the kind of the port there, we're just specifying that we want to open up publicly port 25565 in our container. And okay. what we also need to do is we need to set some environment variables because our, our Docker container allows us to do things like set the Java memory and, and, and things like that. And uh, we can kind of set that in this way just by using this environment variable block. Nice and easy. So you see everything you're building up here, Eric, in, in Docker Compose is just kind of built in those blocks. And, and I think that kind of makes it uh, nice and easy to read and nice and easy to understand. And that would also mean that we don't have to rebuild a Docker image every time we want to change one of those values, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that would be sort of pretty painful. So let's set the, the Java memory. So we're going to set that to one gig of RAM. So we're just kind of constrain okay. the GVM. And then, uh, well, let's um, let's set the, the message of the day. And we're going to set that to HashiCraft. And what we also want to be able to do is set another couple of environment variables. And I want to enable whitelisting because, you know, the, one of the things about a Minecraft server is it doesn't really have anything sort of username and password. It's not, not really kind of like that. What you do is you whitelist um, users to be able to access okay. the server. So if you don't enable whitelisting, then your Minecraft server will be open to the world for abuse. So we're going to enable that. Now, we, we kind of do raise the question of, well, how are we going to update that whitelist? And we're going to do that by using the, the Minecraft uh, remote administration. So that's Archon. So we're going to enable that as well. Now, for Archon, what we need to do is we need to set a password. Now, what are we going to set that password to? Well, I, you know, I could set it a password. I mean, nobody's going to guess that, right? Or, well, I would at least make it password one two three four, Nick. Come password on. one. Two, well, yeah, maybe should we should we also kind of use um, like fives and s's and stuff like that in there and, instead of uh, I don't know. What do you what do you think? Um, you know what I think? Maybe. I what? think what we should do is I think we should do it properly. So okay. <laughs> Terraform has a, an, another um, really cool resource. And what it allows you to do is you can actually use the, the random resource provider. So the, the random provider allows you to generate things like random usernames and passwords. Well, basically anything okay. random. So I can use this resource block like this, and I can say, hey, generate a random password. And I'm just calling it password because that's the name of the, the, the sort of the resource. I want a password yeah. length of 16, include special characters, and then I can do things like override some of those special characters, which is kind of neat. So what does that actually do, the override? Oh, it's kind of going to just allow me to replace some of the certain characters inside of special because not all sort of passwords are going to accept things like, you know, they might be constrained to using uh, dashes and underscores. And, and you can just kind of configure what the that, that sort of password is going to look like. Okay. Now, we've got that there. So we can actually, again, use that interpolation syntax. And um, I don't know. Can you remember, Eric, what the interpolation syntax is going to be for the password there? Can you want to you want to have a you want to have a little guess at this? Um, well, I would assume it would be. Um, wait, can you scroll up, Nick? I lost the. Uh, oh, you've lost everything. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, like, oh, there it is. So I would assume it would be uh, looking at this random underscore password uh -huh. dot password. Yeah. I mean, that's and correct. And then, um, yeah. Yeah, so what, what actually are you going to use is you're going to use that, that exactly thing. So you're, you're referencing the resource and you're referencing the name of it, so password. But what you also need to do is, is just kind of get a parameter of that. So I want to, to get the result. So I'm just using that additional okay. thing there of result. So where would I find like that I can actually find that field? Is, is that in the documentation for that resource? Yeah, that's right. All of the documentation you'll find on terraform.io. And we'll, we'll put all of the links down below, but uh, all of the stuff right. there for every provider is in there. We can just kind of see things okay. stuff down there. And if I scroll down. Oh, there's find, a lot of them. There's an awful lot of them. And that makes it really nice because it means you can take a single workflow across a number of different things. Okay. Are you feeling brave? Um, uh, are we going to uh, do a Terraform apply again? I think we should. Let's let's okay. do it. Okay, Terraform apply time. Now, I'm going to I'm going to run a Terraform apply here, and it's going to complain. And I'm going to show you. Here we go. Terraform apply, and it's complaining. It's saying could not satisfy plugin requirements. Eric, any ideas? Um, well, yeah, it says here that you don't have the random provider installed. That's correct. So do we need to, uh, include that maybe? Yeah. So every time you add a provider, you've got to run in it, Terraform in it, and then that's going to download the random provider for us. So now when we run our Terraform apply again, it's going to run through here. And it's going to correctly kind of pick up all of the providers. It's going to run through our changes and it's going to tell us what it's going to do. So what is it going okay. to do? Well, it's going to generate oh, us a password. random password. Yeah, it's pretty, right? And it's going to generate us an Azure container group resource. Pretty neat. I'm going to hit yes because that looks good to me. Now, this is off. This is in the wild. And oh, look at that. We got oh. an error. Well, wow. what's what's going on there? Why why have we got an error? Let's see. Well, this is that pretty is neat. DNS label, name label already taken. Did right. we uh, put we, something in there that we shouldn't have? No, what we're trying to do is the, the DNS name label here of the Azure Container Group yeah. already exists. So Terraform has kind of checked that for us and it's telling us before it kind of creates everything. So let's just, uh, let's just change this. I'm going to call it uh, uh, HashiCraft uh, TF. And okay. let's run that apply again. So again, I'm just going to get that confirmation. Confirmations are really good. You don't want to be kind of blindly applying configuration. You want to kind of make sure you, you know what you're doing and doing exactly what you need to. And that's why it's nice that you get this output, you get all of those changes. Now we're running. You can see that there and it says that it's creating those resources. Um, maybe if I get out of the way of the screen just uh, a little bit because I'm in the way of the screen and, uh, you know, I'm just being a pain there. But this is uh, now creating that resource instead of Azure. So let's go over to the Azure portal. We can see our resource yeah. group here. Yeah. Can um, we see the other things yet? We will do in just a moment. It's just going to take, you know, maybe 30, 40 seconds or so for for that to be created. Which is kind of, I mean, it's pretty good. You can't really complain creating infrastructure in the cloud in 30 or 40 seconds. I remember um, a time when, you know, it would take you weeks to create resources and uh, that wasn't a whole load of fun. No. But there we go. It's starting oh. to be created now. We can see our server. Okay. We can see our resources. And yep. that is looking pretty good. I'm cool. Kind of. Oh, and there you see the edited name that you uh, gave it. Right? Yeah, right. Absolutely. And we can see there as well that it's now Terraform is reporting and it's saying that it is applied and added one resource. So how are we going to connect to this? Well, yeah, 
We don't actually know what the password is for the Archon server to administer it, and we don't actually know what the, um, well, the, the, the domain name is. So let's look at another feature of Terraform, which is going to allow us to, to get that stuff. So Terraform has this concept of resources. It's got this concept of a provider. But what Terraform also has is the concept of outputs. So an output okay. is something which allows me to create an output variable. So I can define, if you look here, that I'm doing setting an output variable of an FQDN. So the fully qualified yep. domain name. And the, the fully qualified domain name of my Minecraft server. And I'm getting that through interpolation. So I'm, I'm reading the parameter FQDN from the resource Azure container group named Minecraft. Okay, then, so that's one of those attributes of the container group again then. That's right. Yeah, it it's kind of okay. just makes it really easy. And also what we're doing is we've got this Archon password. So the Archon password is, is that randomly generated password that we created earlier. Yep. So let's just add those. And then let's just run our Terraform apply again. And we're running that. And what that's going to do is it's just going to calculate those variables. It's not going to actually make any changes for us. And here we go. And it's doing some checking. And there we go. Uh -huh. So we now have oh, there we go. an output variable of FQDN, HashiGraph test, blah, 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 blah. What I can also I do... the password looks a lot better than the one you came up with, Nick. What password? Well, yeah, I mean, you know. Um, I can just do sort of Terraform output as well. And if I use the terraform output command and then add the variable fqdn, you'll see that I can also get that uh, out there. So there's a there's a kind of a number okay. of nice little ways that we can interact with our server. So why don't we try connecting to this? Okay, yep. so into terraform and we're going to create our server and we are going to log into it. So just gonna paste the name in there, hit done, and let's connect. Now, this isn't gonna let me connect, and it says there, okay? Oh. I'm not white. Oh, that one's uh, a familiar. Yeah, but this is good. And and this is because we have um, the, the sort of the whitelisting turned on. So what I can do is I can bounce over to my containers list in Azure, and I can actually connect to it. So I can get an SSH session into the container. And that's pretty cool. So now what I can do in here is I can use the Archon CLI and the Archon CLI is going to let me add a whitelist. So Archon dash CLI password. And then we can use the password that we got from our Terraform output before, which is this one here. Yep. Okay. And we're going to paste that into there press enter. So now we've got a, a session in, in Archon. Now, oh, this is not, is. yeah. And this is not accessible outside. So it's only accessible from this container shell because we're not exposing a port to the Archon server, which is kind of cool. So that means it's also like behind authentication for Azure then? Yeah, exactly. So cool. only if you can log into the Azure portal, can you get to this, this terminal window? So the command right. white list add and the name of the user, which is HashiCorp Corp Nick. So we've added HashiCorp Nick there to the whitelist. So let's try again. And we're just going to log in again. And well, there we go. Look at this. Oh, we've got Minecraft in Minecraft. Minecraft in Minecraft. That's some next level kind of stuff there. I'm just digging myself into a hole because that's generally what... Oh, okay, right. Well, never mind. Oh, that... Uh... But, you know, this yep. is pretty good because we've got that configuration now. We've set everything up there and it's all been pretty easy. The, the last thing I want to show you... Yeah. And we're going to kind of expand on this in the next episode, which I'm pretty excited about. But, you know, we need to clean up after ourselves. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use yet another command inside of Terraform. And this time, we're going to use the command Terraform Destroy. 
Terraform Destroy. And what Terraform Destroy is going to do is it's going to remove all of the resources that we created. So again, it's asking me for oh, confirmation. Yeah. It's telling me that it's going to clear minuses up. minuses instead of pluses. That's right. Yeah, it's highlighted in red as well. So there we go. Yes, that's being deleted now. Just going to take a couple of seconds. And this is actually going to clean up all of that Minecraft server. So you can see yeah, there. I see that it's destroying a container group. Yeah. And, uh, oh. It's disconnected me already. So the server is already gone. Let's take a look at this in the Azure portal. And we're just yep. going to refresh over here. You can see now that our container has gone inside of our HashiCraft test resource group. And just yeah. in a couple of moments, the resource group itself will have gone because Terraform okay. is kind of managing that whole process for us, which is really nice. You know, the, the nice thing about nice. having this defined in uh, Terraform, Eric, um, if I need to recreate what? this, well, it's actually really easy because I can just run my Terraform apply again and I can pretty much get back to the same state that I was in before. I think that's cool. Nice. That's very cool. That uh, saves a lot of clicking. Right. And we're all done. And uh, we're going to put the links um, to everything in the, the list below. And we're going to kind of give you a link to the repo as well, where you can play around with this on your own. And you got to mash that like and that subscribe button to come back next week. Because, well, we've and, got uh, more stuff. What are we going to talk about next week? Well, next week, we're going to look at how we can kind of make uh, this a little bit sort of nicer. We're going to deal with the fact that immutable containers and the fact that the storage just kind of disappears when you create a new container. And we're going to show you how we can use Azure uh, sort of storage and blob storage and file shares to mount those into our volume so that, well, our world doesn't keep getting destroyed. I think that's going to be pretty and, uh, cool, dude. Will that also help us with the, the whitelist problem that keeps getting erased it will indeed because we can persist that out into um storage which is not linked to the the container itself but until awesome. then good buddy i will yeah. see you later i've got some things to do i need to get back to that punk music yeah punk music bye nick bye.